Grazing muzzles often generate controversy for horse owners, making it difficult for them to know if, how and when to use them. The National Equine Welfare Council has produced this video to help you consider if a grazing muzzle is right for you, and if so, how to introduce one, how to fit one and how to monitor them on your horse or pony. Seeking advice from a veterinary surgeon to help rule out any underlying medical conditions is crucial to help choosing the right weight management programme for your horse. It's important to remember that equine obesity can be related to underlying medical conditions such as equine Cushing's disease and equine metabolic syndrome and these are often associated with recurrent episodes of laminitis. Pepper, his little native cross pony, um, he's 20 years old and um, I've had him on loan for the past six years as a companion pony. We started using a grazing muzzle because we tried um, many different options um, and um, none of them really seemed to work well for both the ponies. The benefits certainly for, for this pair is the fact that they can then graze in together. It does give us peace of mind that he's got as much of a natural um, life that he can have um, out grazing all the time. The other benefit is as well that we can have him on a bigger area. He can then graze a larger area so he's constantly then moving around rather than being um, kept in, in a, a small paddock. I thought that um, like um, some people I thought it just looked a bit cruel um, and but actually um, I realised and recognised that I had to do right for Pepper and um, it would be far better for him to use uh, for us to use the muzzle and for him to have a natural lifestyle rather than obviously put him at risk of laminitis. We allow then um, them an area where they can then spend some time together um, and Pepper can then have his muzzle off but that's the only time that we allow him um, to have time off um, without wearing the muzzle and it has to be controlled um, that strictly. Additionally we find that what we do is we take him out for short walks as well um, two or three times a week and it just means that it's helping to keep his weight down but it gives them a little bit of a stimulation. Um, no snacking on the way though, um, it's very much a power walk um, and then we return them obviously back to the field. We do have um, annual visits um, from the, the vet and we do make sure that they give him a, a general um, MOT. Obviously we're regularly monitoring him because of his Cushing's disease but we've always been um, aware as well of the importance of making sure that we do have his teeth checked um, on an annual basis so um, just to make sure that there is no um, abnormalities, there were no dental um, problems with dental wear, um, which you know, as long as it's checked, um, is perfectly fine. It did mean that we had to persevere, like I say, getting him used to it. Um, but now it's just you know second nature, and I'm I'm really glad that um, we did persevere. Rachel provides an example of successful and responsible grazing muzzle use. The muzzle forms part of a considered weight management program for Pepper, which reduces the risk of laminitis for him and allows him time out with his friend Morgan. Rachel is clearly aware that wearing a muzzle can have an impact on Pepper's behaviours, such as social interactions, mutual grooming and defending himself, and compensates for this with time away from the muzzle but with restricted grazing, in order to strike a balance between his nutritional and behavioural needs. Grazing muzzles can reduce grass intake by up to 80%, making them an effective method of weight control when all other options have been exhausted. These management strategies should not be left too late. Taking early preventative measures at the first signs of weight gain are better than allowing your pony to become too fat. If you are still seeing no improvements despite your efforts, seek veterinary advice. If you think that a grazing muzzle is right for your horse, there are a few things to think about. Make sure your grass is long enough in your paddock that the horse can still eat with the grazing muzzle on. Try to make your grazing muzzle as comfortable as possible. Um, this can be done by adding padding to the straps of the muzzle, um, like with this muzzle. Make sure if you do add a padding to the straps that it's suitable for the muzzle that you've chosen and that your horse is happy with it. It's also important to ensure that the fencing is secure in your paddock and that there aren't any hazards in the field that the muzzle could get caught on, especially making sure that the water container has a smooth rim. The length of time your horse will need to spend wearing the muzzle will vary according to the individual and the weight management strategies available to you. Research has shown that wearing the muzzle for 10 hours a day can successfully result in weight loss. If in doubt, speak to your vet. 
As your horse approaches its target weight, the amount of time spent wearing the muzzle can be gradually reduced. When your horse is not wearing a grazing muzzle, make sure you restrict calorie intake appropriately. Research has shown that horses will binge eat to compensate and can consume up to two thirds of their recommended daily allowance in three hours if left unrestricted. You don't want to undo all that hard work. I'm going to show you how to fit a grazing muzzle. Um, this is Sugar, she's going to be helping me um, do this. Um, it's important to remember there are lots of different sizes and shapes um, of grazing muzzle on the market um, and each horse is an individual so it's important to find a grazing muzzle that's going to be the right fit for your horse. Um, so it's important when we're training new bits of equipment um, on our horses that we break it down into really small steps and make it a really positive experience for them. Um, so initially when we're fitting a grazing muzzle we just want to measure up and make sure that we're going to have roughly the right size for their head before we even put it on the horse. So I'm just going to hold it up against Sugar's head here. Good girl. And that looks like about the right size for her. Um, what we want to do is we want to introduce it slowly um, and we want to reward the behaviour that we want to see. So when she's nice and calm and relaxed, um, we can either give her a little treat or if they really like wither scratches, um, we can use a wither scratch. Um, just to show them that they've given us the right response that we want to see um, and make it a good experience for them. So that hopefully they'll enjoy having their muzzle put on in future. Um, and it won't create behavioural problems. It's really important that we don't move on to the next stage and we just keep repeating that step until we are happy that our horse is ready to move on. If we rush things, we might see that um, they start to have fearful associations with the muzzle um, or that they're not very happy about things, um, which could lead to problems further down the line for us. So once we're absolutely happy that our horse is calm and relaxed and doesn't have any issues with the muzzle being around its face, we're just going to pop it over her nose. We don't want to keep it there for very long. Initially, we just want to make it a brief one and then remove it. And again, she's been nice and calm and relaxed about that, so she can have a little reward for that. Good girl. Good girl. All right, sweetheart. Very good, aren't you? And once we're happy that she's comfortable with that, which I think she is now, good girl. We can pop it over the end of her nose. <laughs> Good girl. And I'm just going to do that one more time because she wasn't totally comfortable there. Good girl. Good girl. There we go. Good girl. And she's quite happy there. So I'm just going to slip my hand over and put the head strap up over her ears there. And I'm just going to do the muzzle up. Because this is the first time that she's had the muzzle on, we don't want to leave it on for too long. But I do just want to make sure that I can slip two fingers under her nose band there, just to make sure that she can definitely open her mouth with the muzzle on. And because she stood nice and relaxed, I'm going to give her some of her balancer up through the muzzle there to make it a positive experience. And then we're just going to take it off. That's been nice and calm, and she's quite happy about that whole process. Um, and going forward, we just want to increase the length of time each time that she's wearing the muzzle. And if we get to any problems at any stage, we just want to go back a step, and make sure that they are comfortable and relaxed, having it around their faces and around their heads before we secure it on, we leave it on for any longer. Good girl. We can see this grazing muzzle fits sugar comfortably um, because we want to make sure that it's not too tight or too loose, um, and we want half to an inch clearance around the nose band so that she can open her mouth comfortably. We also need to make sure that there's not any rubs around the head or the nose um, when they're wearing their grazing muzzles. You can see that Sugar's still got her head collar on under her grazing muzzle, which is fine because it doesn't impede on any of the grazing muzzle and it isn't causing any rubs on her. Um, but if your horse doesn't have to wear a head collar out in the field, it's absolutely fine to turn them out with just the grazing muzzle on. When first introducing and leaving your horse with a grazing muzzle on, it's really important to make sure that they can still eat with their muzzle on and still drink with their muzzle on um, before you do that. Um, initially, it's going to take time for your horse to get used to wearing it, so we wouldn't recommend leaving them um, alone with their muzzle on for any more than half an hour. It's really important to remember that um, wearing the grazing muzzle um, might change their dynamics with their field mates as well. So it's really important before they're left unsupervised um, with any other horses um, that they've been accepted back into the group.